beneath the dust of forgotten ruins, a secret has been sleeping. Hidden for millennia, buried beneath crumbling stones and silent sands, strands of ancient DNA have waited, waiting for the right tools, the right minds, the right moment. That moment is now. A tiny fragment of bone, no longer than a finger. A tooth, darkened with time, pulled from the earth on a routine excavation off the coast of the Mediterranean. Harmless, unremarkable, until a spark of science touched it. What emerged shattered the very foundation of what we believed about the ancient world. The Phoenicians, legendary seafarers, merchants of purple dye, and whisperers of secrets across empires, their ships reached every corner of the known world, but their origin always cloaked in shadows, until now. When scientists sequenced this ancient DNA, they didn't just uncover a lineage, they unearthed a connection that rewrites everything, from the shores of North Africa to the frozen edges of Northern Europe. How could a single genetic code rewrite the map of ancient civilizations? What did the Phoenicians truly carry across the seas? Trade goods or the seeds of empires? This is the story of a discovery that defies textbooks, that blurs borders, that rebuilds history from the blood of the forgotten. And one haunting question remains. If the Phoenicians were not who we thought they were, then who were they, really? More than 3,000 years ago, a civilization without borders ruled the sea. The Phoenicians, from the bustling ports of Tyre and Sidon, to distant colonies in Carthage, Malta, Sicily, and even the far edges of Iberia, these ancient mariners carved their influence into the very bones of the Mediterranean, they sailed not for conquest, but for connection, trading cedar, glass, and the fabled Tyrian purple across continents. Their ships were swift, their language the seed of modern alphabets, their myths tangled in the roots of ancient gods. But despite their immense influence, the Phoenicians left behind no empire in stone, no unified kingdom. Instead, they became whispers in the chronicles of others, Egyptians, Greeks, Romans, their story fragmented, told by rivals and rewritten by time. And in this silence grew a mystery. Where did they come from? Were they simply an offshoot of the Canaanites? Or something older, deeper, born in forgotten lands beyond the reach of ancient scribes? For centuries, Historians debated, archaeologists speculated, Phoenician artifacts surfaced from shipwrecks, temples, and buried cities, but the people themselves remained elusive. No royal tombs, no preserved remains, just fragments and echoes. Until now. Because hidden within a coastal burial site in Lebanon, a handful of bones resisted decay. Human remains, rare, intact, and untouched by modern contamination. For the first time, a direct genetic link to the Phoenicians. A chance to hear their story, not through the biased pens of ancient historians, but from the silent truth coded in their cells. What secrets had their bodies carried across the seas? And what would modern science uncover when it finally learned to listen? It started with a dig. Nothing extraordinary. A team of archaeologists surveying the outskirts of ancient Sidon in southern Lebanon stumbled upon a cluster of graves buried beneath layers of urban sprawl. Construction was planned. Rescue excavations were routine. No one expected to find anything that would make headlines. But the earth, as always, had other plans. Among shattered amphorae and time-worn relics, they found a burial chamber, small, cramped, sealed for thousands of years. Inside, a skeleton lay curled on its side, arms folded across its chest. The bones were stained with age, 
fragile as dry parchment but still remarkably intact. At the base of the skull, a molar remained embedded, untouched. And in that tooth, ancient DNA. At first, it was cataloged like any other find, archived, documented, set aside for later study. But when researchers from the Lebanese Directorate General of Antiquities and the University of Cambridge began the genomic analysis, they noticed something strange. The mitochondrial DNA sequence wasn't what they expected from a Canaanite descendant. It held patterns, foreign ones, markers that hinted at a migration far older and farther than the regional history suggested. The find, once routine, now burned with potential. This wasn't just a Phoenician grave. It was a genetic time capsule. What if this was the missing genetic link, long sought but never found? What if buried in this tooth was the first unfiltered voice of a people who had spoken only through ruins? A team of specialists was assembled, geneticists, historians, anthropologists. The dig was no longer just a local effort. It had become a global race to decode the truth. And what they would discover next would challenge everything. The investigation unfolded like a forensic thriller, driven by precision, patience, and relentless curiosity. Once the skeletal remains were secured and transferred to a controlled lab environment, the team faced their first major obstacle, contamination. Ancient DNA is fragile, easily corrupted by the touch of a modern hand, the breath of a technician, even airborne particles. The tooth, though well-preserved, was over 2,500 years old. To extract viable genetic material, researchers operated in a clean room sealed from the outside world. Every movement was surgical, every breath filtered. A single mistake could erase the data forever. Under magnification, the tooth was cracked open. Inside, they found it. The dense pulp where time had failed to reach. A miracle of preservation. From it, fragments of DNA were carefully sequenced, analyzed, and compared to a vast global database. And then, the puzzle began to shift. Initial results showed a complex ancestry, not purely Levantine, not entirely Canaanite. There were markers from ancient North Africa, unexpected signals from the distant Atlantic coasts, and, most baffling of all, traces of genetic signatures linked to populations in the Iberian Peninsula over 3,000 kilometers away. It was as if this Phoenician individual had not simply lived in the Mediterranean, but carried within them the map of it. Historians joined the conversation. Could the Phoenicians have originated farther west than previously believed? Could their famed seafaring not have been expansion, but return? A migration, forgotten by time, now resurrected through science? More samples were recovered from the same burial site. Each one told a slightly different story, yet all converged on the same truth. This was not an isolated anomaly. This was a pattern, one that defied centuries of assumption. The data was growing. The mystery was deepening, but science demanded more than speculation. It demanded proof. When the final sequencing results came in, they sent shockwaves through the academic world. The Phoenician genome, long believed to be a simple offshoot of the Canaanite lineage, was far more complex. The DNA told a story not of one origin, but of convergence. Deep within the genetic code, were unmistakable traces of Iberian ancestry, not from recent contact, but from thousands of years before the height of Phoenician power. This wasn't the result of trade or intermarriage. It was ancestral, foundational. The implication was staggering. A significant portion of Phoenician founders may have migrated eastward from the Atlantic coasts of what is now Spain and Portugal long before recorded history took note. But that wasn't all. 
The genomic comparison also revealed similarities with ancient Berber populations of North Africa and even minor links to early European farming cultures. The Phoenicians, it seemed, were not a people born in isolation. They were a genetic mosaic, a fusion of maritime migrations stretching across continents. This shattered the long-held belief that the Phoenicians were simply Canaanites who became traders. Instead, they were descendants of ancient voyagers who had already mastered the sea long before they were given a name. The mitochondrial haplogroups passed from mother to child revealed maternal lines with roots outside the Levant, and the Y chromosome data, tracing paternal ancestry, linked some of the samples to lineages previously thought extinct. It was as if the ancient Mediterranean had been a crossroads long before the Age of Empires, and the Phoenicians were its most vivid expression. Peer-reviewed publications followed. Headlines emerged. The phrase, history rewritten, was no longer a cliché. It was a scientific fact. The Phoenicians were no longer just enigmatic traders. They were evidence of a prehistoric super-network, a web of peoples, voyages, and cultural exchanges lost to time. Until now. Picture the Atlantic coast over 5,000 years ago, long before the rise of Rome before the pyramids reached for the sky. Small, agile boats cut through the cold waves near the Iberian Peninsula, their sails stretched tight by winds that carried whispers of exploration. These were not Phoenicians. Not yet. They were seafarers from forgotten tribes, proto-maritime cultures who mapped the ocean with instinct and courage. They followed the stars. They traced the migration of birds. And as the climate shifted and coastlines changed, they pushed eastward, toward the warm arms of the Mediterranean. Their journey wasn't a conquest. It was a slow drift. Generation after generation. Families settling on fertile shores, mingling with local populations, building villages that would become cities, Byblos, Tyre, Sidon, and with them, they brought something far more valuable than goods, knowledge, techniques for shipbuilding, trade routes etched into memory, beliefs shaped by ocean horizons. Their descendants, shaped by centuries of contact with Canaanite culture, would one day be called Phoenicians. Now we can see them clearly. Sailors unloading copper and tin in Crete, merchants exchanging glass for papyrus in Egypt, Explorers planting colonies in Malta, Tunisia, Sicily, Carthage, once a distant outpost, rising as a global power. And through it all, the DNA persists. Threads of Iberian and African blood flowing through every market, every harbor, every whispered deal struck beneath foreign stars. They were not mere traders. They were the bloodstream of ancient civilization. Vessels of genes, stories, technologies. Their ships didn't just carry cargo, they carried connection. And behind their legendary purple dye, beneath their forgotten language, they carried a deeper identity, one now resurrected by science. What we once saw as a mysterious Levantine people now emerges as a fusion of worlds, a people born of migration, movement, and memory. For centuries, the Phoenicians have existed as a riddle, famous yet faceless, influential yet invisible. Their legacy etched into the alphabets we write with, their trade networks shaping empires, and yet their identity remained elusive. Until now. Through the fragile thread of ancient DNA, we've pulled back a curtain that time had drawn shut. What we found was not just a civilization, but a revelation. They were not simply Levantines. They were not just Canaanites with ships. They were a living archive of prehistoric migration, a human tapestry woven from Atlantic explorers, African pioneers, and Mediterranean dreamers. Every artifact they left behind, every shard of pottery, every sunken ship, 
now tells a deeper story, one of motion, of memory, of bloodlines that refused to be silenced. Science has given voice to the forgotten. Genetics has become our new archaeology, and the past is no longer just what we see in stones and scrolls, but what lives inside us. So what else is waiting beneath our feet? How many other truths still lie buried, misread, or overlooked? If one tooth could rewrite the story of an entire people, what could be hiding in the ruins we walk past every day? History is not finished. It's alive and evolving. And with each new discovery, the world we thought we knew changes forever. If you're fascinated by the secrets hidden in our DNA, if you believe history still has mysteries left to reveal, then don't forget to like, subscribe, and dive deeper with us into the past reawakened by science. Because sometimes, to understand the future, we must first decode the blood of the forgotten.